truly dangerous weather is rare. In over 250,000 miles, we've been exposed to less than three days of it. And most of this was before the days of weather facts and the internet. Yet, if you venture offshore, we feel you should be prepared for the worst. There are a couple of things to keep in mind while you're thinking about this subject. First, understanding the basics of how weather works is crucial to choosing the correct storm tactics and avoiding heavy weather in the first place. Often, moving the boat 50 miles in one direction or the other can make a huge impact on the weather you experience. Figuring out where to position yourself is a relatively simple matter if you understand the basics of meteorology. Most of the unhappy stories we've investigated started with small maintenance problems which cascaded into something far worse at the onset of heavy weather. Practicing preventative maintenance before you depart means more energy can be focused on dealing with weather. Throughout surviving the storm, you will find real-world examples and suggested tactics. Practicing all of these approaches in moderate conditions during both day and night will help you prepare for the real thing. This book begins with the experiences of 10 different cruisers in the Tasman Sea during late 1998. Most of them did well. A few had the type of problems we would all rather avoid. With these real-world stories as a foundation, the preparation section of the book will walk you through how to evaluate risk factors on board and what to do about them. Each aspect, from the engine and drive line to steering, rig, safety on deck, personal safety gear, and storm canvas is covered. The section finishes with a discussion and examples of when to use or not use a life raft. The section on tactics starts with the 1998 Sydney Hobart race. Take a close look at the pre-race weather analysis. There were plenty of warning signs of what was coming. There are examples and interviews from 11 of the boats which endured the worst of the storm and the different strategies they employed. Pay close attention to the section, What Really Happened to the Weather. With this survival storm as a background, we'll take you through a variety of defensive measures you can employ. Keep in mind that there is no magic formula, no one tactic that works for all boats in all storms. You often need to change tactics as the weather changes. Heaving to and heavy air beating, including motor sailing to windward, is first. Then comes running before the storm. Reaching in heavy air brings with it special risk factors. Finally, we'll discuss lying a hull. Rarely a good idea. There are special sections devoted to cruising onboard moldy hulls or under power. But we suggest reading the conventional tactic sections as well. Drogues and sea anchors reviews a variety of hardware and techniques for using this gear. The key thing to keep in mind is that in order to be successfully used, this equipment should be practiced with in moderate conditions. Dangerous conditions are rare, and most of us don't sail often enough to be exposed more than briefly. So, we've gone to a series of professional sailors to get their feedback. This section starts on page 481 and includes the comments of 26 pros. Outside help is rarely necessary, but if it is, you need to understand the procedures and risks involved in abandoning your vessel for the theoretical safety of another. This topic is covered in detail, starting on page 551, with a number of examples, along with comments by the rescuers, both sea and helicopter-based. We've left design and construction to the end. Although this is also covered in Offshore Cruising Encyclopedia, the emphasis here is strictly on how the design-build process affects the boat in survival weather. You will find discussions on hull and rig design factors, construction, and interior layouts as they relate to the worst Mother Nature can dish up. The last section begins with the comments of two professionals who spend their time investigating situations that have gone wrong. Their comments tie back to everything you've read up to this point while reinforcing the importance of maintenance and understanding how to handle your boat in heavy weather. You'll probably want to read these comments several times. Finally, there's a recap starting on page 662, which brings all of the key elements back together. Before leaving this subject, we'd like to re-emphasize that heavy weather in general, and survival storms in particular, are rare events for the average cruiser. If you take the time to learn the basics of meteorology, which is not hard, 
prepare your boat as if you expect to get hammered, and then do some practicing in normal gales, you and your crew will feel much more comfortable, emotionally and physically, in good weather as well as in bad. Every aspect of heavy weather preparation also yields benefits for everyday cruising. There are storms on the horizon There are thorns in our feet There's a holy river flowing Where the water tastes so sweet 